thing. So what's it like seeing your creation uh, come to what it's come to that now it's in a second series on, yeah. on Amazon. You know what, um, I spent the last year and a half or so trying to put hey guys. how I feel Hi. into words, Welcome. and surreal you. is the word that always comes to mind. Just watching it all happen, it's just been so surreal. So, I, I couldn't be happier. We were talking about um, what it's like to bring this series to life from how it was, uh, you know, from the origin. Oh um, man, we were, Aaron and I were actually just talking about it. As we go through this, we learn more stuff, because we don't really, when we're talking now, we're talking about new stories and characters and how do we think that works in episode three or whatever it is, you know. But now to get these great questions we're getting, we thought season one, Aaron created this, you know, phenomenon of a podcast. Myself, Gail, Aaron are bringing this to TV. It's the first time a podcast has been brought to TV. It's with Amazon. There are big expectations and most primarily... We have Aaron's core audience, so the last thing, the, the first thing we want to do is treat them right and get yeah. them to come to the TV show. So the first season, we were just winging it. We were creating it. No one had ever done it before. We were being creative. We were not winging it in a negative way, meaning we were doing something the first time. We didn't, there was no playbook how to do it. Season two, we learned so much from season one, and uh, we're just able to elevate it in so many ways. Uh, you know, yeah. it feels we're in a good spot. Yeah. You're doing um, a mix of very well-known stories like Burke and Hare and Countess Bathory and some stories that I had certainly never been aware of. So how do you pick and choose like the balance of that for each season? Well, it's the importance of a writer's room. You know, getting all of the people in a room who are good at plotting out story and grabbing on a theme. You know, like what's the main feeling people are going to walk away with? And then building as a team the collection of six episodes so they all... They all feel like lore individually. Every time you hit play, you feel like you're in a lore episode. But you, but on their own, they each are very unique. Um, and so there's a little bit of a, you know, we, we start with 20 and whittle it down to 10 and then cut out the last couple. And yeah, so there's a process to it. It's interesting. I talked to Doug Bradley about his episode a couple of months ago. And he said you were going to do an Alistair Crowley episode. Uh, is that so still that's, in the cards? It's, well, it's, it's Jack Parsons, who oh, is the founder okay. of Jet Propulsion Laboratory, new Alistair Crowley. Um, and it's sort of a story of, um, as, as Josh, one of our actors, said, um, drugs, sex, and rockets. Not rock and roll, but rockets. Black um, magic sex cult. Yeah. With and, rocket fuel. With rocket fuel. So you have this scientist who's also essentially a, a, a wizard. And it, it's, it's, not a, it's not an Aleister Crowley episode. It's focused on Jack Parsons. But it does harken back to the John Dee episode that I did uh, a few months ago uh, called Black and Wild. John Dee was the alchemist advisor to Queen Elizabeth and um, some of the spells that Jack Parsons was known to have used in his occult life came from John Dee. So there's there, there are these connections there. But it's a brand new story and it's exciting. It's very visual. Yeah. Is there any uh, history of your forecast that you would like to see in this second in this second season, sorry? That it didn't work because I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of episodes. I just released number 96 on Monday. Um, so, yeah, know. <laughs> you know, working in my way toward number 100 for the Halloween week. So there's a lot of stories out there that I want to see adapted. You know, I've, I, there's a soft spot in my heart for uh, an episode called Rope and Railing about two lighthouse keepers and one of them dies and the other's just left with a dead body of the guy he hates <laughs> in the lighthouse. And it, you have to listen to it to understand. It's a great it's, one. It's a great one man, like, in a room story that would be brilliant if it's cast right and I and if you could nail it right but now we know by the way where we can take change well, I think season two has taught us a lot um, as much as we've now um, graduated the show and now have a totally different thought about what we can do and what we can't do I feel like yeah. things that we couldn't do in season one we may now be able to do in season three because right. of the way we've replotted the thing yeah absolutely so as a podcaster I'm curious where did you come up with the original idea and what inspired you to do a podcast? Um, I would I'd use up all the remaining time if I answered that. <laughs> it's um, a great I, story, I, though. It's, it's it a is super a great story. story. I think it's very inspiring to a lot of creators. It essentially involved me deleting, almost deleting a file that, that Lore is all based on because I was quitting writing for good. But at the last minute, I stopped. Um, go to lorepodcast.com. There's a press page. I think it's just .com slash press. And there's some interviews where I cover that. Um, I, I, the way I describe it is that scene in a movie where the where the guy leans against the bookcase in the library and it's actually secret door and he falls into a hallway, right? <laughs> That's how I got into this. I fell in accidentally, um, but it's a long story. 
I would like to say when we met this guy, uh, Laura was pretty fresh. A couple thousand, not a couple thousand, you know, downloads. The thing took off overnight like nothing I've ever seen. But, you know, when you see that sometimes, you're like, oh, someone got lucky, someone this. This guy did not get lucky. He made his own luck, and I, I'm blown away by what you've been able to achieve. And he's an artist, and happens to also be a good businessman, but I think it's a, a real testament, like you said, um, to people who work hard and don't give up. This is like Laura's yeah. story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have time for one last quick question. Go for it. Okay. Um, so we talked earlier about uh, you're changing the format from the first season to yeah. the second season. Yeah, a little bit. Mod it. Modulating it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, how does that, how is it a different challenge to tell the longer form story as opposed to in a bigger world where you're doing... I, I don't see it as a huge challenge. Okay. Um, the fact that there's things to see fills in a lot of that time. Um, taking five seconds to look at the gears of, a, of an enormous clock, you know, that, that's something I wouldn't be able to describe in audio format, but but it, it adds to the, to the story completely because you're overwhelmed by the grandeur of it all. Um, it, it, it was it was surprisingly easy to do that, yeah. yeah. And, and the contextual elements are still there. They're just baked in more organically instead of being pulled out and like, pause, now let's go talk about this over here. It's it's embedded in the story you're already seeing and that makes it a lot more organic and, and relatable.